This is a little video showing some of the features of my 6809 based 8 bit micro. Um, the board uses mostly um, retro parts, so it incorporates things like a 6522 um, for, the, for a parallel port, um, some addressable latches for joystick ports a quad UART um, and the video interface that you can see there on the screen is, is derived from a Yamaha V9958 uh, it also incorporates an Oval 2 also known as the YM3812 which was used in the Soundmaster cards uh, the, probably the most interesting parts about, about the boards uh, revolve around the programmable logic, but um, I'll, talk about, I'll talk more about the hardware in a minute. First of all, I'll um, show you some of the monitor features. So just reset the board now, let me do some tests. So if the board um, incorporates a machine code monitor I, uh, I've written, um, it's, it's, it's a fairly typical um, monitor reading with um, the ability to read memory, write memory, and so on. So I'll just go over a few of the little features. Uh, first of all, you can dump memory um, to hex. This, uh, the monitor doesn't understand any other base except for hex at the moment. Uh, so, for instance, we can dump from C000, which is the top of ROM, if we say we're going to dump um, 80 hex bytes, you can see the output there, um, so you can see the memory address on the left, the contents in hex, and then the ASCII values for, for, for um, printable characters. Um, you can also write to memory with the W command, so for instance we can write bytes, we can write words, and you can also write strings. So, but I've missed this, messed up that command because I don't have an address at the beginning. Oops. So I'm going to write four out, right into four zero 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 three four uh, five six seven eight. No, there we go. So we've got two bytes and a word and then a string. So we can then dump out that. So if we dump 16 bytes, that should hopefully catch all of that text that I've added there. Okay, it's missed the E on the end of YouTube. That's in the next. There you go. And we've got some random characters there because the, the ROM does not currently clear memory when it starts up. So we can also write very, very, very simple programs, so I've hand assembled the most trivial program I can think of and so again we're writing into 4000 and we're going to write 886 in hex which is load immediate into A and we're going to write 40 as the, as the immediate value and then we're going to do an 8A which is or immediate into A and we're going to or zero 02 and then we're going to generate a software interrupt which should take us back to the monitor so I can obviously dump that out there you go, you can see the bytes I've, I've uh, written into memory there 86408A023F and then a whole load of stuff from the previous write uh, we can also disassemble those um, instructions. So S is the command for disassemble because we're already using D for dump. Um, this is a, this is probably the most complicated bit of 6009 assembly I've written so far. Um, it, it, it's got a few little bugs, but um, it's just about passable. Um, 
So we're going to dump out three instructions from 4000. There we go. So you can see we've got the address on the left, the opcodes, uh, the hex values, and then just for fun, um, those ASCII values, uh, sorry, those hex decimal values in, in ASCII form on the right hand side there, which is occasionally useful um, for, for seeing when the disassembly runs over ASCII text. Um, so I can then run that little program with E for exit monitor. So you can see it says break at 4005. 4005 is what the program counter was at when the software interrupt was generated. Um, I can also view the registers that were pushed onto the stack at that point. Um, most of those have fairly random values, but you can see the A register has 42 or 42 um, in it, um, which is the result of ORing 40 and 02 together, obviously. And there you, go, you can see on, on the right hand side there the program counter was 4005 at the point that the software interrupt was entered. Um, the, the main use of the monitor is obviously not writing little programs because I do that on my Linux box and then I transfer them over to the Compact Flash, which I'll show you shortly. Um, the main use for the monitor is for um, testing out and playing with the hardware on the board. So we've got things like the joystick ports, we've got the 6522, uh, and we've also got the programmable devices. So I can, uh, for instance, show you the joystick ports. And the joystick ports are simply um, addressable latches that are um, chip selected via the programmable logic um, and they sit on the first port because there are two joystick ports and I hope one day to write two player games. Um, 8200 is the address of the first joystick port and the capital R command um, simply reads a single byte from memory or I.O. And there we go, we're getting FF um, because each of the five inputs on the joystick has a pull up resistor. But if I, for instance, press the fire button on the joystick and then do another read, you can see I'm getting PF because the um, lowest bit of the high nibble, so bit number four, as I conventionally. Um, Conventionally numbered um, is a zero, which indicates that the five button's been pressed. Obviously, you've got the four other inputs as well, but I'm not going to show you those. Um, now, the 6522 is currently got um, the main function of it is as a uh, as a simple interrupt generator for for a uh, a periodic interrupt to the system that's generated at 250 hertz. Um, for reasons I'll go into in a, in a moment, but um, when the interrupt is generated, a uptime value in in, in RAM is, is incremented. So that's that's displayable with the U command for uptime. And there you go. You can see we've got a value there. It's a, stored as a 32-bit integer. And if you if you right, wait a little bit and read it again, you can see it's gone up. And the difference between uh, those two values is obviously how long the time has passed between them. Um, so that's the that's the uh, main uh, main use for the 6522 at the moment. Also attached to the 6522 though is a 25 uh, pin parallel port which I hope um, eventually to hook up to a, a, a dot matrix printer J just, to, just for fun to see if I can print out um, program listings from the disassembler and and, and other things from within my little micro. Um, the board's also got a buzzer attached to one of the programmable logic outputs and you can generate a, a tone of um, constant frequency based on what value is in the register. And if I can remember the address of that register, I think it's 8E01 8E and um, let's the, 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 the feeder for the for the square wave generator is a system clock 
um, divided down to, to, to get a useful frequency. But 5, 0 should, should generate something audible. There we go. But you can see it's not very um, not very loud. But it, it, it was useful when the board was um, in being, being brought up. And zero zero to silence it again. Um, there's also the ability to write to VDC registers. Uh, but I can't actually remember the name of or the letter I used for that command at the moment. But that was used when I was um, figuring out how to program the video interface. Obviously, at that point, I was um, accessing the monitor through the through the serial ports because the video interface wasn't working. Um, we've also got a uh, the ability to read to download files via X modem using one of the UART channels, um, and there's, there's other commands for. Um, talking to the keyboard controller, which I'll talk about more in a minute. Um, but that's uh, there's a you can basically test the test the uh, the key test the keyboard membrane by uh, printing out um, scan codes from the keyboard controller. Uh, we've also got a IDE interface, which you should be able to see in the video. With a little compact flash card sat in it via a um, adapter. Um, so we can we can mount the mount the compact flash, which basically means reading the MBR from the um, from the first sector of the disk, uh, figuring out the partition tables. Uh, this um, this system uses the Minix file system. Um, that was done basically because whenever you look at uh, other people's little homebrew micros, and they have file system support, be it via compact flash or or more likely these days by um, SD card. Everyone chooses FAT, you know, normally FAT16. Um, I wanted something different. I also wanted to learn a little bit about how Unix file systems work. And the Minix file system is a, is a very nice, simple Unix file system. Um, it's also just about manageable on, the, on a microprocessor like the 6809, uh, due to the fact that 6809 has uh, easy to use 16-bit arithmetic which is useful when um, calculating offsets and things. Um, the, the file system code, as I've written though, is, is, is very crude. Um, you can list out directories, but you can only do it via inode number. So inode number one is the root is the root directory. Well, I should say before looking at the file systems that you can also run the um, IDE identify command. So you can see they it's a Toshiba, um, Toshiba Compact Flash inserted, and you've got the firmware revision and a serial number. These all come from the um, IDE identify command. So we can read in a um, simple program that uh, I've, I've compiled up on my Linux machine and then copied onto the Compact Flash. Uh, so if we look at, for instance, the test prog program. We read that into our 4000 4000 memory location. You can only read a file by inode number, not by file name yet. Um, but 0005. And then we can run that little program. So it's just a little, little program that exercises two routines in the ROM, one for printing a string pointed to by the X register and the other one is a little delay which uh, again uses the X register as the as a delay value. Um, so we could disassemble that if we want to uh, download, uh, rather disassemble the first 16 instructions. There you go, you can see them on the screen. And you can see at the bottom there from uh, Location 4017 that it's ran into the message that's printed on the uh, on the screen there, which is why, you, why you're getting gibberish. Uh, but yeah, the program is fairly trivial. It does a jump for a jump table that's stored in ROM, um, and the software interrupt at the end there to return to the monitor. Mm, so, what else have we got? Um, 
Right, so if we list out the directory again, there's some other programs here for talking to the real-time clock. Now, the real-time clock on the board is a DS1305, which is a SPI real-time clock. Um, so there is a very, a very crude SPI um, controller that's that's uh, implemented in one of the programmable devices. Uh, sorry, programmable logic devices, um, and um, what's happening at what, what that's doing at the moment is uh, it's simply bit banging to the SPI pins on the on the various peripheral ICs that are on the board. So at the moment, it's not acting as a as a full SPI controller, but um, I hope to get around that to that one day. But in the meantime, the SPI um, peripheral ICs are, are functional. They're just not particularly fast because of the the, um, the shifting that the CPU is currently doing, which should really be done inside the SPI controller inside the programmable logic device. So I can read in, say, the showtime command. Is I node four. I can run that. Whoops. And there we go. So I think that's the correct time, which is kind of cool because I've not actually had this board powered up in a couple of weeks. There's a little um, CRTO two zero thirty two um, on on the board to, to keep track of the time when the power's off. Um, so, um, the ne next thing I'll show you is a uh, is my snake game, and one of the reasons I made this micro, other than for the experience and and the and the fun of it, uh, and also as a means to learn some new technologies that I'm not particularly familiar with, such as uh, VHDL and um, AVR C coding is um, is to write games. So I've written, uh, my, my first game that I've attempted to write is a implementation of Snake, which I happen to quite like on the uh, on the ZX Spectrum. And then I remember playing it on the bus uh, on my Nokia phone back in the, must have been the uh, mid 90s, I suppose. Uh, so I thought I'd have a go at writing Snake. It's, it's a fairly straightforward game to to write in assembly. Uh, if I, I read it in into our 4000 memory location, that's inode number 7. Um, it's, quite, it's a relatively long long program. You can see the second, the third column there rather is the is the length of the file in hex. So it's, uh, it's, it's, right, it's quite a bit longer than that show type um, test prog. Uh, I, I read it earlier, uh, so I won't, I won't attempt to disassemble it. But I can run it now. In any case, this is a little welcome screen. Um, you can calibrate the screen there. That's that's handy, especially on these new uh, television screens that aren't particularly good at displaying analog video. You probably wouldn't have needed to do that on a on a CRT, and the default register values would have. Put the image nice and central, but uh, you need to force it to the extreme of the uh, of the display on the CFTs. So if I hit the R button, oops, I'll try it again. Oh, there we go. It started the game. <laughs> so obviously some kind of debouncing problem there. But there you go. It's Snake, and uh, you can cool around the screen, eating the food, and going longer. Just like a snake is supposed to do. It's, it's fairly playable. The, the, the wife likes it. And the snake gets slightly faster every time he eats something as well, just to make it more challenging. But um, it's lacking sound, which I shall show you in a minute what the sound of this board is like. Yeah, anyway, I can play him for quite a while before it gets too difficult. So for now I'm just going to die. 
And then we go, go into the wall, Mr. Snake. There we go. So, up to exit. Now it's not clearing up the uh, display at the moment, but I might be able to recover that if I can remember the key combination. Nope, no. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Okay, I'll just hit the reset button. So the last piece of hardware I want to show you is the sound playback through the Opal 2. So if I look at the compact flash again, what I have is a register dump produced via DOS box of the Prince of Persia, Prince of Persia MS DOS game. So DOS box allows you to write out uh, register dump files of the um, Opal 2, um, essentially interactions between the, the emulated CPU and the um, emulated Opal 2 uh, sound interface. It writes them to a tech, to a um, to a binary file. Um, and I've written a little assembly routine that compiles those files um, right to the registers in the Opal 2 at the right time, and um, and then delay if the uh, if the file um, indicates that there should be a delay at that point using a um, a timer mechanism built on top of that 250 hertz uh, system interrupt. So I can read in that file. What I'm going to have to do now though is to stop the recording of the video and, um, and re restart it with the, my camera in a uh, place closer to the speaker on the, on the television so it can get a decent recording. Thank you.